In this video, we're going to be covering Bitwig Studio's Humanize note effect. And again, just focusing on the device itself. I think Bitwig might have some other humanized features, but they're not like an actual device, whereas this is a device. And this one does have like a true utilitarian practical purpose or function for pretty much any music producer, no matter what music it is that you're making. And that would be the velocity control here. So humanize is just adding in another type of randomization to either whether or not the note is going to play or not play where that note is going to fall on the grid and then this velocity one which is if you have stuff routed to velocity or just the generic kind of amp velocity sensitivity you can get a little bit of randomization beyond what you have either played in or done inside of the clip so in our example here i've just set all of the velocities up to 100 percent for right now because that's important for us when we then kind of go and look to see what's happening because you do have to factor this in um, it's common sense in real life when you're producing music but it may not be in this example so that's why i've done that so our velocity is at 100 notes coming out at the same volume every single time and now what I wanted to do is I want to set velocity also to this unite thing here okay so we're expecting to see it all the way up the whole time now if I go and I bring this down and let's just take all of them and I know you can use keyboard controls, I just don't. We're gonna put it there. Okay, we can see where that's falling. Now, what I wanna do is start to turn this velocity range up a little bit, and let's watch to see where it's gonna go. Okay, so this is basically setting then how far away it can move from what we initially had set up. So let's bring this all the way back down to like 1% or something. Very small, very small movement, but there is going to be some variation on each and every one. And so I just wanna go ahead here and bring in our instrument track and let's again set this to humanize there and let's just record the output. And so my expectation is to see everything kind of just in that range. And yeah, you can see some tiny little movements there. Let's go ahead and let's set this up to something more like 20%. And we'll do the same thing. And we remember that we kind of were starting at the midway point. And now you can see that variation that's existing around that middle position that we set. And so that's really how you can work with this and how I could see myself using this on a daily basis because it's so fast and easy to set up to give some variation. And it can be extreme. Like if you really are looking for some extremes on some particular parameter, you can kind of use that as a randomizer and just do it like really quickly at the note level, which is what I like about this. I actually think that's really cool. And then you can go in there and fine tune it, or maybe you get some kind of like a happy accent so again like even if I wanted to here I could um, go back to our initial clip and set this velocities all to be up at 100% by default basically and so now when I do put this here you know we're only going to be able to see our control moving down away from the 100 and what I've noticed in doing this is even when you set up like this, it doesn't just like stick it at 100 and try to go past that limit. Like it still seems to be giving some variation on almost every single one, which is nice because I was like worried about that happening. But yeah, if we bring this up to like 80, let's again just see what we get. And I probably said that and now this time we'll see them all stuck at the top, but...
And yeah, a lot of them were stuck at the top. So I guess I should kind of take that back. It's just going to be something you're going to have to experiment with a little bit. But that's, in essence, the way that you can work with velocity. And of course, remember that you don't need to have any amp velocity sensitivity. And you can just use this on other parameters. So let me go back in here again, and we'll take them all and just bring it back again to something like around that 50 marker and really crank that thing up and let's see how extreme of variations we get okay yep there you go and then remember you can always go in here and just very quickly maybe fine-tune things a little bit if you want some variation or there's something specific that you're trying to accomplish so that's how the velocity works within the human eyes next up we have timing which again is just going to slightly offset things it's one of those features where like you kind of know why it exists and if you were to take like a music production class like one of the things most instructors are going to tell you over and over is like oh don't set things directly on the grid it's always better to have a little bit of like a humanized quote unquote feel but you're still just using the computer to kind of do this and it doesn't really a lot of times amount to much when it works it works but when it doesn't it doesn't so just a sidebar soapbox moment it's okay to put things directly on the grid that's what most people are doing most of the time but i'm just going to go ahead and let's bring this up you know we can bring it up by a large degree and right now what's going to happen is that some of these are going to be pushed like forward in time And we're setting like the maximum amount that that can happen. So let's go ahead and just like bring this. Yeah, let's bring it all the way up. That's fine. And let's watch and see what happens here. Okay. So we can obviously see where these things have fallen like way off the grid. But in theory, sometimes it still should be hitting close to what you had set up like here's a good example like this is almost falling right on that note um, what's cool though is because this particular device does introduce like a little bit of latency to it it's not showing up here but it should show up yeah it should show up here like there should be a little bit of latency that's being introduced especially when I go and add early notes. That was what I needed to do. Um, <laughs> so now like it's doing a bit of a look ahead thing and it will allow some of these notes to fall early as well. Now, if you try to like record something in real time, it won't show you the actual result, but it will still sometimes put them forward. Okay, and then we can go ahead and take a look at this. And there you can see it. You can see all of that variation. So a lot of times in real life, if you are going to use this, it's going to be something like that because there's no way to like only have this occur on some of them. It's going to happen on all of the notes no matter what. So a lot of times you might just do something really minimal like that because I don't really believe there's any other way to like reel it in on which ones are going to get it and which won't. Um, as we just saw, none of them were falling directly on the beat anymore. And I can't really ever see myself using it. This one looks like it basically did fall right on it. That one's still a little off. Yeah, though these ones are all still just like that tiny, tiny bit off. Um, but yeah, like it's a way to, if you really care about not having things fall directly on the grid to do that. But again, like real human eyes is like a performance. It's a feeling. So just asking the computer to do this is always like a little bit risky. And again, it's going to be like random. So you want to be recording the outputs of the note clips that you've made to make sure that you get something that is repeatable that you like. And finally, what we have is chance. And this is referring to whether or not the note is going to play or not. So it's not related to the timing one. What would be cool is if they had a specific another knob that was chance for the timing. And I guess like you could probably set something up really creatively where 
I don't even know if you could do this actually, because you know, every clip's going to be different where you could determine if this is going to actually trigger or, or set the range. Not worth trying to experiment with because with chance, it's very straightforward. We set this at 50%, 50% of the time, the note's going to play 50% of the time. It's not, it's going to be random. <laughs> If we choose to record one of these, and on that first go, it only actually triggered three of them. So let's watch this time and see if this time we get a lot more. And those ones are still staying present. I'm just trying to see what happens over time. We can uh, stretch this out maybe and just, uh, Watch to see what we get in total. And it, yeah, I mean, it definitely did. It definitely felt like it was even below 50%, but that's how that's working, right? So uh, again, you want to kind of record the output of that so you have something repeatable. I think this is useful for like some writer's block situations where you're trying to create a variation and you need to rely on a happy accident. Um, most of the time, I wouldn't use something like this just because of the style of I music I make. Having that randomization is not a good thing necessarily like it you want it to be a little more intentional but i can definitely see where using this velocity range um, could be something that would be brought into a daily workflow um, when you are looking for some of that variation some random variation to keep a user's interest especially if you're playing maybe the same like loop over and over and over again and even if it's just slightly offset you can get some some slight variance that hopefully keeps the person engaged um, more so on like a subconscious level so that's a look at bitwig studios humanized note device however you use this thing in real life please share that down in the comments I actually really appreciate that. Um, I know a lot of people don't write it. Not many people watch the videos, so it, you know it doesn't really matter. But I definitely like going down there and reading to see how people use some of these things because it gives me more ideas um, for when I'm producing music. So thank you for watching, like always, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Take care. <laughs>